Right, hello, we're live. Hello and welcome to my AGG Ask Golf Guru live feed. Um, and we've got our first question here, actually. Uh, we've got our first question, if I bring it up, just where I can see it, from Jeff, is asking, why, is Shank, if, why if shanking is such an issue for many players, do game improvement irons have a hosel that sits proud of the okay, face? Hello, we're live. Let's just mute that a second, hello. Um, good question, Jeff. Um, well, um, the hosel, it has to be some kind of roundness to it because the shaft going into it, I guess. Um, there were irons once made Cleveland made where uh, the hosel didn't go down into the, it went into the top of the club. So if this is the club, it went in here, it didn't go down this part. Um, people still managed to mishit them. They just didn't hit the hosel. Um, it's a good question. I, I just don't think, A, I don't think they'd sell. People wouldn't want to see them. Uh, and B, I'm not sure if it would stop mishits in any way, actually. Uh, okay, Yap says, uh, change of club, same brand manufacturer and back, really influence a top player like Spieth. So change of club, he's asking, let's bring that up, good question. Um, where is he? I can't find your question, there it is there. Uh, okay, so he is saying, um, same clubs or change of brand manufacturer. I don't think it makes as big a difference as people say. I think it's one of those things that people really do um, latch on to, something to talk about, isn't it, for commentators and what have you. If a player is, I mean, I would always trust the player. The player knows what they feel, what they want, um, what they kind of believe will work for them. You've got to trust their instinct a little bit as well, I would say. Um, but good question. Uh, okay, what is a good way to stop yourself losing your head after a bad hole or a bad shot. I think Jack's meant to be saying bad hole, bad shot there both times. Um, what is a good way? Yeah, that question there. Good question, Jack. Um, it's a hard one. You've got to learn to control your emotions. Everyone works on positions, controlling the golf club, um, trying to control their swing, trying to control any twists and releases and all these things, but then they don't think about controlling themselves. If you can't control your emotions, how can you control a golf club? Thinking about driving a car, how would you be able to control that car at speed if you're angry, so if you're relaxed, or if you've got lots of time? People drive differently, don't they? They react differently. Gotta learn how to control your emotions. One way I do it is I put it in perspective in life. There are bigger things, more important things in my life than golf. Um, even though it's my job, it is my job, uh, and I want to enjoy my job. So I try and put myself in situations where I know I'm going to enjoy it. Not playing many competitions, <laughs> like the one I'm playing in tomorrow with the Buzzman and Harper and many other people. Um, so yeah, maybe try and think about what's going on around you a bit more and learn to control it in certain ways. Okay, Buzzman's got a question. Hello, Stephen Buzzman. Good to see you on the Twitter, Stephen. Just one. Shouldn't you be preparing for tomorrow? <laughs> Stephen Buzzer. Yes, I should. I've hit 25, 30 balls earlier at the range, and that's me done. That was me done. Um, I was hitting it brilliantly. Why hit it brilliantly on the range? i just got to get out there and play. I'm looking forward to playing tomorrow. Is the weather okay, Stephen? Are we going to be okay? with the weather let me know um okay Stephen. this is a question what who can answer this question because i don't know the answer Stephen butler i've asked this question Stephen. not sure there is your one there can you use a phone in a tournament i don't know the answer i thought there was issues with having devices with compasses on um which obviously a phone has built in i don't know if that rule has changed or not, or something I've just made up. Um, can someone answer the question on Twitter, in the live feed here on YouTube? Good luck tomorrow from Ben Smales. Good luck for tomorrow, Mark Mike Crossfield. Thank you for that on the live feed, on the live um, chat on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if you can use a phone or not. I would like someone to answer that question for me. Um, I really don't know. Uh, Okay, this is one, an interesting one from Gareth. Um, 
There you are, this one here. What is the key difference between a single figure handicapper and a mid range handicapper? It varies from player to player. Um, any skill change from pro to PGA pro, so tall pro to PGA pro, PGA pro to say amateur golfer, like you know, county player, county player to category one player, category one, so all the steps, so mid range to low. Um, different players have different skills. I've played with fantastic players who boom the ball miles but maybe don't have good short games but they're still playing at x standard high or low it's balancing the skills across all three or having a real excel in one and then you can offset that with others there's never any kind of blueprint to a better player if that makes sense uh you know i was never the longest hitter but i had a very good short game as an amateur um uh but i also had um quite a kind of dogmatic attitude to try to practice and get better than people as well. And those things kind of made me get better than other players. Um, it wasn't that I was maybe the longest hitter and those kind of things. Uh, the phone rule depends on your local rule from Jack Bass. So that means you're what you're saying, Jack, and this is something I'm not so good. I'm going to have to talk to someone um, in the uh, hut, am I? I never like that. I talked to Buzz's dad, he was in here. Okay, we've got one from Daniel Wood. Hello, Daniel. Uh, golf pro, I think, aren't you, Daniel? From are you? I can't remember where you are actually, but Daniel's got one. Uh, where did it all start for MC YouTube PGA training? Keep up the good work. Hashtag live. Got the AGG bit, but I will answer your question anyway. Where did it all start for me? It started on YouTube, really, for me. PGA training was something I did, but it didn't really. I don't think gave me any particular skills that I use now. Um, which is sad for me to say, but true. Um, it was my desire to try and do something different. What I find with PGA Pro is a little bit disappointing at times is their lack of innovation, how people just tend to want to follow what the rest are doing. Um, happens in um, business, you know, it happens in the kind of golf shop model, it happens in what people might stock. It's, there's so many pros in such a small island, they all kind of end up copying each other and nothing's unique or it all gets a bit kind of um, almost suffocated a little bit, um, which is a different question as well with how many PGA pros come in the system and go out, those kind of things. Um, but it was, it was my desire to try and do something different with my life and something I enjoyed. Um, okay, Matt Smith, great question from Matt. Thanks for taking part, Matt. I love this question. This is a great one. Where is it? It's there. Why haven't you gotten rid of the spider on the wall yet? It's not a spider, people. Uh, where are we going? It's there, isn't it? That's not a spider. It's a tack. It's a little tack that I hang things on. But a great question anyway. What's the, west, the best way to build power in your golf swing? Coming from Luke here. Um, interesting question, Luke. Best way uh, to build power in a golf swing? Well... Um, I find with lots of my students, it's not about power, in a, it's about how much power they are losing. So what I'll always try and do with a student is get the most out of what they put in first. Does that make sense? Um, so if they're swinging at 100 miles an hour, they should be getting X out of it with their driver. If they're not, I'm going to look at where those power leaks are. So they're hitting too much down, they're presenting too much dynamic loft, they're hitting it off not an effective part of the face, those kind of things. Um, so it's much more for me about working out how to get the most out of what the player brings. Now, when you get the odd few who, so you're kind of elite player, often they are getting the most out of their physique and their delivery numbers and those kind of things. Then you start putting in personal trainers, fitness people, those kind of, kind of uh, specialised people who can help me think about ways of getting them to become more powerful. That's not my skill as such. I'm going to maximise more what they bring and then give them to the fitness uh, people to do their uh, kind of magic on. So Ewan, hello Ewan, always like a question from good old Ewan, very active on all the platforms and lovely to see you taking part Ewan. Uh, have you coached any pros? Yeah, I've coached quite a few pros. Um, New Zealand tour player once before, or via the internet as well, through the videos. Um, coached, uh, coached a few PGA, uh, PGA pros, so not tour pros as such, but PGA pros, and good amateurs as well. 
Um, yeah, so I've taught a few pros. I mean, obviously, coming from Devon, we don't get that kind of pot of fantastic amateurs and fantastic pros in the area. Like if you're in the Surrey area, there's you know there's a it's a different kind of clientele, isn't it? Um, but uh, I've I've taught my fair share and as, as many as I want to. Pros are never. It's always desire. Pros always think the desire is to teach elite players. It's never really been my desire that. Um, because it's, it's yeah, there aren't many of them. Where's the money in that, really, I always think. Um, Gareth Judge, got a question here. Where are you, Gareth? What's your username here, Gaz? Oh, you've gone way down. I can't find you. There you are. Here you go. Gareth says, do you follow other YouTube, golf YouTubers? I don't really. I, I love YouTube. It's a fantastic platform, and I follow things in my much more in my interest, like you're following golf, which is your hobby and your interest. Um, I follow things that I'm interested in, so maybe kind of, um, maybe tech things where I can learn. I play tennis a lot. I don't play as much anymore because I'm so busy and I miss it, but I, when I used to follow and kind of listen to some teaching and watch a lot of Federer videos and things like that. So I, I follow, I watch YouTube a lot, but uh, I don't particularly follow the golf ones. It's my job, remember? So um, I tend to try and kind of move away from it uh, a little bit. Uh, okay, we got one from O'Leary. I don't know how to say your first name uh, there. Let's bring you up here. Let's find your, there you are. Good question. Uh, will you get David Howe on a vlog? Did you play with him when you were younger? Yeah, I went to school with David up until we were about 11, 10. Um, we were at primary school together. We played a lot of football together. I went to his birthday parties every year as a kid because we had the same, our birthdays were on exactly the same day, actually, which was quite funny. Um, and we used to play football again. He was a good footballer. His brother was a very good footballer. And his brother, he kind of disappeared, like stopped playing football. And everyone was like, where's David gone? And I carried on playing football. I used to love football in those days as a kid. Um, and then I turned up at like a national junior event, the Caris, I think it was. Um, and I just bumped into him and another guy called Gary Harris, who uh, used to be a very good player. He now runs a thing called the Jamaica Tour, um, who were the old Swindon posse. It was just fun seeing them. As you go out, and I bumped into David at the Wales Open last year. He didn't recognise me, and then we started the video. It's quite good fun to catch up with David again. Hopefully, yes, love to get him on a vlog, definitely. Um, and he did, yeah, I played with him once or a couple of few times. I played against him in a lot of tournaments, um, which was always good fun. Had some good results, but he was David was not afraid to win events. Basically, he was, um, yeah, he was a winner. He could go very low. Uh, okay, what have we else? Are we good? Okay, great question from Ian Clark here, Ian. Let's just find you here because I've got, there are you, you're the real Ian, are you? That's there you are. So Ian Clark asks, what do you prefer, Lynx or Parkland? I think I prefer Parkland, but I love both. It's so much more situation-based than it is... Um, actually it, it, which one i prefer i think it's more situation to the course i mean favorite courses my favorite course is sawgrass stadium love it um really loved um st melian love that course <coughs> excuse me live youtube cough um but um i love turnbury as well i love saunton um but you know it, i like a good partner course in the sun in my ricky fowler midlife crisis shirt that's really nice. Lynx Golf is brilliant, but it's much more of a battle against the elements, uh, a lot more. <coughs> Great question here from Dave. Uh, hi, Dave. We met Dave, came and met us when we were in Liverpool. Um, where are you here, Dave? I can't find your, your question now. Uh, where are you? Anyway, Dave asks, when are you coming back to Liverpool? <coughs> Great stuff again, Mark. Uh, hopefully very soon. Love Liverpool. Loads of great courses around there. So, um, yeah, really want to get back to Liverpool. And, so, you know, it's just a really nice city to visit, really. Um, so soon, hopefully, Davey. How's your golf going? It was going all right. I'm going to do... We've got a special guest coming um, I soon on the phone. So we're going to use a special... We're going to phone a special guest uh, up on the phone, which we're going to break for questions but keep your questions coming we will come back to them 
Um, here we go. This is a great question from Glenn Francis. Uh, what is the most common fault you see when teaching? The most common fault I see when teaching is people not really understanding what they think they understand. So obviously an out to win path and a face open to a path is a very common fault. So I see that one a lot. Uh, but people's, their understanding of how they think they're creating those issues is often way, way, way off the mark, not what they are actually doing, which is why I use measuring devices. I use measuring devices because it allows me to find um, issues with delivery quicker than having to work it out over shot after shot after shot after shot, because when you put strike into those deliveries, if, you can't, if you're not working that in, it's gonna trick your eyes on ball flight, which is a common misconception. Um, but also, I like then to be able to back up and prove to the player why we're doing what we're doing. I want to quantify why they're spending their money and why I'm telling them what they're doing. Uh, that's I love showing people their numbers at the start of the lesson, at the end of the lesson, their data on where the ball goes, their dispersion, their distances, the shape changes towards the goals they were asking and getting towards. Um, and just quantifying it, saying, look, that, you're, you're going to pay me for this lesson because I have shown you that I can make you better. Um, and and the, uh, the data and the measuring devices allow me to do that. Right, keep using the hashtag AGG Live. Keep posting the questions. I'm coming back for more questions. We are just going to take a live call from a special guest just to, for the mega match tomorrow. Anyone who doesn't know, but I'm sure you all do. A mega match tomorrow, me against Stephen, the Buzzman, and Kevin Harper in a Pro-Am. Um, so we've got someone who's going to talk a little bit about that, about what he thinks, who he thinks might win. So let's see, um, let's get our special guest on the, la on the line here. Hello. Is that Matthew Lockie? You are live on YouTube, Matthew. Please do not swear. It's actually Coach Lockie to you. It's <laughs> Oh, you sound a little bit husky. Are you a little bit tired, or are you still are you suffering from a night out? Still, are you? Uh, that, I was um, watching the golf, and I was watching your live thing actually, waiting for the call. Okay, yeah. And how's the live thing looking? Do you like the little Twitter things coming up? It's quite clever, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I was going to ask you how you did that. Yeah, magic, very clever, very clever. Matthew. Yeah. There's other bits which I haven't quite set up yet, but yeah, my my live streaming's going to go through the roof. Yeah, do you like very, my, very clever. Do you like my Ricky Fowler midlife crisis shirt? Yeah, it's bright, isn't it? You, you rocking that? I, I don't know if you're allowed to wear this shirt without telling people that you're suffering from a midlife crisis. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you didn't tell them, they would probably just think midlife they crisis. They would know anyway. Well. Yeah, yeah, they would know. Do you see yeah. what I mean? So I feel like... I Hello, yeah. hello, I'm Mark Crossfield, and yes, this is my Ricky Fowler midlife crisis shirt, thank you. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Done. Done, yeah. Get Let's off. get that out. Yeah. Ice broken, <laughs> get over it. Let's play golf. <laughs> <laughs> right, Matthew, so to point, it's the mega match tomorrow. Lots of asking why Matthew wasn't invited to the mega match. It wasn't that Matthew wasn't not invited to the mega match, because the mega match is something I have just made up. It's just a pro-am that I happen to play with because I get invited to play every year from a good friend, uh, an old student basically um, invites me to play and I like playing with him and his gang. Um, so for me it's a social thing really, having not really played. The two full-timers, Steve and Kevin, and Twitchard who has now got the wooden spoon. Now you've heard that he's failed the health check, Matt, have you? Yeah, he, yeah he's disappointed us in that, hasn't he? His... He was good with a broken back last time. Wasn't he, when he yeah, up, so. yeah. Well, he's always good on he's always good on Twitter with the old. He gives it a bit of this, doesn't he, on Twitter? Yeah. And then it gets close to the old match, and what happens? He's like, ah, oh, back's gone. Ah, uh, oh, that old chestnut. Ah, uh, yeah. Broken. Just he obviously broken. saw. I reckon he saw the vlog from Broadstone. Yeah. Saw how I was back to back birdieing and other birdies and ripping it in there. And if I just got the clubs right and didn't play with two cheats. Who cheat yeah. when I go for a poo? They cheat and try and trick me. <laughs> go for a poo. <laughs> go for a number two, and they all—it will all backfire. <laughs> it all backfires indeed. Um, I think <laughs> I think he saw that video. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, he panicked. He thought, Oh, my, oh that's, another, yeah. that's another birdie from that. My back's gone. <laughs> but I, I still won, so it wasn't that good. Well, you didn't. You lost the individual quite dramatically. Uh, didn't I, you? I, I, I won, and, and I Chris Hart. Interesting that you lost dramatically and Chris could barely manage a half. You, you but somehow, but somehow I lose. On the first tee <laughs> and you just made up matches as you went along to try and win something. I won. I am now, I'm back on my winning run and my wrist is okay now. <laughs> I'm back. Anyway, so let's get back to the real point here. Okay. Ready for this? Well, actually, I've got a little question here from Steve Butler. Let's do this live. Are you watching the feed as well? Uh, Trouble is your feed. Your feed. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, because your feed will be slightly behind, obviously, because it's uh, there's always a slight delay on live stuff unless you yeah. choose to pay for very expensive things. Let me find his little question here. Oh, it's hard to find them all sometimes. Um, uh, there he is, there. He is asking, "Is how is Coach Lockie's wrist? How is Coach uh, Lockie's wrist live on a Saturday uh, night at 9.20? How is Coach so Lockie's wrist? My wrist is all right at the moment. I went and played um, about six holes with Mark um, Coles tonight. The Cole Meister Cole, General. Mark Coles, yeah. Marky Coles. Did he have the same yeah. gilet on as you? You didn't have mates G lays yeah. on. I thought that would have no, looked. You would have looked quite cute. Yeah. You could have held hands down the first. I think you got a different one instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was good. How are those oh, new my... clubs of yours? Oh, um, trusty Lumpy is trusty again. I noticed you didn't get a Taylor My Aid hat, Matt. Do they not yeah, love they... you anymore? No, I guess. As companies try to control the internet as much as possible. Yeah, a bit, a bit sad that, isn't it? Really? It is. It's a, it's a changing world fast, and I will not be embracing that change. But did you see what yeah. I did? Did you see what I did to mine? I quite like it. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny, yeah. Lemon, my aid, was my favourite. Lemon, a... my aid. <laughs> So, question then about tomorrow's mega match. Let's have a live prediction before I go back to answering a few questions. Um, okay. Can uh, you give me a uh, live prediction uh, okay. for the mega match tomorrow? I've got a question, Podrick Walsh. I will answer your question in a second. I've pulled it up there. I will answer you in a second. Um, live, my question, Matthew, hit me. Results. So, um... It's a tough one, this, isn't it? I very, think it's. I tough. think it is tough. Kevin's on form. What did he win the other day? He won something. Kevin won the West Region Pro thing, so like a big one. Yeah. One. Does that get him in? That yeah. doesn't get him in the PGA, does it? Uh, or does that no, just an no, order of merit? You've got to win the order of merit for that, haven't you? Okay, I can't. That's what it used to be, but I don't know anymore. They. Yeah, so he won the West Region. Thing. Yes, my please. That's a big one. Um, so he's coming off a mega good. win. So he's like mega winning already. Yeah. Um, Steve Buzzer is it's his home course. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, Steve Buzzer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like Buzzer is his home course. Like it I is. He's a full. He's say. a full timer. It's his home like, course. He's on form. He's, if if he doesn't he's beat. There for like ten years. Yeah, he should walk it. He should walk it. Absolutely Buzzer, walk it. Can, Buzzer can go low as well. Buzzer can. Like, he's, he, he's won this year as well. He's won. I haven't won. Yeah. And you like are going <laughs> to shoot about four over. You, you're, you're, no, you're going to shoot level to four under. I predicted. Yeah, well, I was last uh, year. I was flying in this. It was just my ability, inability to play in holes that killed me. I was yeah. three under after twelve holes or four or something like that, and then just hit three so, loose shots. Like Kevin, Kevin will shoot like two to four, two to five under. Yeah. Buzzer will be like. Buzzer will be three over. over. Two over. Yeah. To two under. 
he'll lose and a you'll few. You'll be level to four under. So depending on how the results go, if you all play well, it'll be Kev, you, then Steve. Yeah. And then if Kev has a bad one, it'll be you, Kev, Buzz. And if Buzz plays well, it's all going to be a draw on four under. Yeah, I think my money's on Kev, and I have no idea what I'm going to shoot because I haven't literally hit a ball since that last ball hit on the 18th yeah. at Broadstone, which was what three weeks ago now. Yeah, but you're I mean, I hit 50 balls like on the range. A bit more, aren't you? you haven't got a camera. You haven't got like giggles and. Yeah, I find that like makes that, it all a bit easier though because there's no. I don't try and hold on to anything. Often when I've got a card in my hand. I'm trying to hold on to a score, and then I just... Nah, you, yeah, you say this, but you know what you're doing, don't you? You just crack on and go and shoot for and go and win, and let the internet break. Ah, oh, dear. I'll be waiting for it about one o'clock tomorrow. I'll be at work. My phone goes off. I've won. Great. Let's not hear the end of it. <laughs> don't, don't like to talk about it well on that note yeah. Matt I'm going to say goodbye thank you for joining us on the live stream you've thank been a very you. good Love guest <laughs> hello everyone and I'll speak to you soon speak to you soon see you later Matt goodbye there we go a little bit of Lockie Magic live on the live stream so we're going to go back to just doing a few more live questions for you before time is out so we got one here I said I'd answer from Podrick, uh, Patrick uh, Walsh what do you make of Shields and Peter Finch's quest for the Open, AG? Please answer. Um, I don't know. Uh, I presume what you mean is they're trying to get in the Open, are they? I've not really seen what they're doing. Good luck to them. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's like people don't respect how tough that is. Um, you have that dream of like, you know, people can get in the Open. It's one of those ones anyone can get in. It's, it's yeah, good luck to anyone. Uh, I used to, I tried that when I was younger, I had a few goes and it got quite close a couple of times, but um, yeah, good luck to them, but you know, good luck to anyone uh, 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 entering that, that's a hard one. Okay, let's have another question here, who have we got here? Uh, so, Robert Legg, let's get this one up, this is a shocking one, uh, Robert Legg. Where are you, Robert? What's your famous leg? There he is. This is a great question. Um, so, are you 40 years old, MC? No way, surely not. Big 40. I don't, I don't know how old I am. I've lost count. I don't really count anymore. Just don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah. Don't know. Not in this shirt. This shirt, I'm about 19, aren't I? Midlife crisis. Uh... Okay, we've got one question here from <laughs> that was surreal, wasn't it? Where's his? Da -da 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 where is he? There. Here we go. This question. I like these questions. I find them interesting. How come I've started hitting the ball way too high with loss of distance? I don't know. <laughs> How would I know that? Uh, possible reasons that you could have or anyone could have. You're hitting higher on the face. Let's say it's a. Let's pretend it's a driver. So you're hitting higher on the face. So I teach a lot of people hit up the face with a driver, so they catch it up here, so sky it, and they're not quite skies and they launch really high and they don't even feel that they've done it. Um, you could be doing that. You could be presenting nor, which is very common, too much dynamic loft. So as you hit the ball, so this driver here has 12 degrees static loft on it, but it will have a delivered loft, which lots of people forget and don't realise, and that loft is different to static. For most players, it is for me, it's always slightly more. So I would deliver a 12 degree driver here around 20 degrees, 18 to 20 I would deliver normally on a GC2 HMT system, which is measuring point of contact, not Trapman, slightly different if you're thinking Trapman numbers because of their points of measurement. Um, so too much dynamic loft at impact or hitting it in the wrong part of the face is what I would suggest. Um, let's have a look what else have we got here. We're going to do a couple more and then we're done. Um, thanks everyone for posting. We'll do more of them. Do you think Club Tech has gone as far as it can or do you think there is more genuine innovations to come? Matthew Clark. Let's find that question there. That's a good question. Um, there it is. Do you think Club Tech has gone as far as it can go? Um, there will always be innovations. That's why innovations are fantastic. Uh, there is always innovations in any form 
you know, people think phones have gone as far as they can, or, you know, lots of, th that conversation has happened in many different genres. Um, I don't, you were not going to see the leaps forward that they had at certain periods of time because of the governing bodies just simply won't allow it to happen. RNA, USGA, they police it, um, they control it, they don't want things to get out of hand. They want the skill of the game to be in your hands. And that's the thing you've always got to remember. I think it's so interesting with the club reviews I did. The reason I started doing club reviews at the beginning of everything was to try and show you how similar they are. It still baffles me to this day when I get people wanting to ask, asking questions about, you know, is this one really going to go that much further or not, or those kind of things. They are very, very similar. You are buying on feel and appearance and branding, and then there are tiny little movements in innovation. But little movements in innovation over time can work out to be bigger ones. But do remember, you've got a rule book. And in the rule book, it tells you where you should drop a ball if you hit it in a hazard. It also tells you what you can and can't do with equipment. Uh, those rules are the same as it is for dropping a ball out of the water as it is for anyone. I, I mean, for me, it's a similar question to if I hit the ball in a water hazard, do I have the same options as the guy playing at Sunningdale? Yes, the rules are the same for all of us, peoples. And it's the same with the equipment. Um, doesn't matter how many times I say that. Uh, people don't. They, they're still asked the uh, same questions. Oh, this is a great question. I love this. <laughs> where is it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? From Chris. There you go, Chris. There we go. Why does Buzzman always sound like a dodgy 90s DJ when introducing his videos? <laughs> I don't know. He does do that little stutter, doesn't he? That little, what does he say? Thanks for checking out, checking out the video, doesn't he? He does that little stutter. I guess we all have our little quirkies, don't we? Eh? Gotta love the Buzzman. Gotta love the Buzzman. Uh, okay, Matthew Pope's got an interesting question. I get this one asked a lot. Popey Ten, there. Oh, just missed you. Where have you gone? That one. Right, Pope asks. I mark been having lessons past year, hitting the ball better than ever, but stock on foot and handicap for two years help. Maybe hitting the ball better isn't the answer for you lowering your handicap. Maybe it's that you need to hit it longer. Maybe you need a different shape that uh, works around the course that you play at week in, week out for your handicap better. Maybe it's about uh, getting the ball closer to the hole, so you might be hitting it really well on a range, but actually if you put it into a gaming environment, are you hitting it within 10 foot? Are you hitting it within 20 foot? Those kind of things. Um, get game golf. Uh, I don't know where my device is. There we go. I've got mine charging up and charged up ready for tomorrow. It might show you some of your uh, weaknesses which you could work on to help you um, find out why you're not getting lower. Uh, okay, let's give it last question and who's going to get the last question? Uh, okay, this isn't a question but let's just give Neil a little bit of YouTube loving. He's always action. I'm looking forward to meeting you tomorrow, Neil. Um, selfie time, I think. Neil says, early to bed tonight, Mark, big day tomorrow, and it's not the mega match, it's meeting me. <laughs> Good one, Neil. Okay, let's do one last question then. One last question going to Ryan. I will do lots more of these people, so don't worry if you've not got your question answered. You come through yet, Ryan. There you are. Ryan, what is your favourite course you've ever played on? Great question to finish there, Ryan. Um, Sawgrass Stadium. Have to be Sawgrass Stadium. When your golf travel plug sent me to play in their Pro-Am at Sawgrass Stadium was just fantastic. The course is spectacular because obviously I've seen it on telly for so many years. Um, it's also it's spectacular in its condition. They colour it in. It's got like this blue kind of uh, fertiliser they put on. It makes it go darker green. When I got there, I had to kind of touch the greens to see if they were actually real. Um, and obviously, you've got the 17th with the island uh, hole, which is obviously famous. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a kind of course, if you get a chance to play it, it's a must-play course. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, live streamed me up. Don't forget, if you want to win my Taylor My Aid hat, 
tailor my aid hat. Um, you need to predict my score in the Mega Match tomorrow at the Pro Am. And the first one I see tomorrow, so I'm teeing off at 12, so I'm going to be finishing around 4 or 5 o'clock. So I will hit Twitter at some point. The first correct score that I see on Twitter after I finish my round. So there's no point posting them now. You should be posting them kind of 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock onwards tomorrow. Past 69, I think. You'll win this hat. Guess, tailor May, tailor my aid hat if you guess the correct score that I shoot on Twitter tomorrow. Thanks for watching. This has been a live feed. Hope you've enjoyed it. Plenty more to come. See you all soon.